Virginia Tech, of course, got rid of Justin Fuente. Totally understand it. Things were not going well there. They moved to Brent Pry, of course, the defensive coordinator from Penn State. Went 6-7 and seven last year. The postgame win expectancy said they should have been closer to a 7-5 and five team as opposed to a 6-6 six and six team during the regular season. They got walloped in the bowl game, but uh, I don't know that there was a lot to play for there. So, regardless, uh, we'll start off with the offense here. And, oh, by the way, number 65 in returning production, roster strength is number 60. This is maybe the worst roster I have seen Virginia Tech have in a long, long time. I mean, they are going to have to get really creative when it comes to this roster, both on offense and defense. Uh, but we'll talk about that here in a second. The, the numbers were just putrid last year. But, um, but yes, this offense, by the way, the offensive numbers, uh, roster strength number 86 on offense, number 18 on defense. So the defense can maybe keep you in some ball games. Uh, they're number 23 in returning production on defense, number 106 on offense. And both of them were not good last year. Defensive PBA per drive was number 86. Offensive PBA per drive was number 90. A net points per drive was number 80. They just, this team was not great. And yet they were still relatively fundamentally sound. Number 53 in turnover margin, over 43 in penalties per game. Uh, let's start off with this offense. Like I said, Tyler Bowen, who was the Jaguars tight end coach, uh, is the new offense coordinator. He was the co-OC at Penn State in 2020. And of course, that's where Brent Pry came from. Uh, he's a former tight end and offensive line coach as well. So he, he likes to to get teams to play down in the dirt. That's what he wants his offense to do, is to run over people. And I think that that's they're going to have to reshape this offensive roster to be able to get there, because I don't think they got the pieces to do it yet. Quarterback Braxton Burmeister was not able to get it done last year, number 111 in passing success rate. They did bring in Grant Wells, who was the quarterback at Marshall. Now, can he curb his turnover problems at Marshall? Because he, he threw a lot of them. I mean, just a bunch. Uh, Pry did hire Joe Rudolph, who is the associate head coach and the offensive line coach and the running game coordinator at Wisconsin for the last seven years. Wide receiver skill personnel doesn't seem to fit what they want to do as far as blocking downfield, etc. The offensive line does not appear to be up to snuff, and it's going to take some time for them to get where they want to be on offense. They, they are going in a different direction than the majority of college football is right now, and that could certainly work. It could definitely work, but this is going back to a bygone era that I'm curious how it's going to fit, right? With the hires that he made with Bowen and Rudolph, yeah, well, I want to see it. I just want to see it. All right, uh, from there, let's talk about the defense, okay? Brent Pry's defense at Penn State finished top 25 in yards per play all eight seasons that he was a defensive coordinator there. He did pretty good things when he was with James Franklin at Vanderbilt as well. Linebackers Dax Holyfield and Tisdale are back after combining for 16 and a half tackles for loss. That is going to be pretty important. Defensive line could be an issue here. There's not much experience depth. It doesn't fit the scheme that they're wanting to run as far as being aggressive. Uh, secondary should be pretty good. They were number 23 in passing success rate allowed, uh, and that's even after losing Jermaine Waller. I still think they've got a lot of talent back there. Uh, obviously, secondary should be the strongest unit on the defense. Uh, they are projected favorites in seven games, and I would assume most of that is based on the talent that is going to be on defense. I don't know that I think that this is a seven-win team. I'll I'll tell you that. Uh, their win total is six and a half. To go over that six and a half for them to get two seven wins is plus 130. So it is significantly juiced to go under six and a half. Looking at the keys to the season, it's going to take a long time to fix this. Um, the hires on offense look like they're set up to shorten games, use tight ends, et cetera, because they don't expect to be able to get a ton of skill talent. I would assume that's why he's going that direction. Or it could just be, let's zig when everybody else zags. Maybe that could be it. It looks like the VT admins are playing the long game here. I think they're going to give Pry plenty of time to clean up the roster. I assume that they feel like they kept Justin Fuente maybe a year too long, maybe two years too long. And they're going to give Pry enough time to build his way back out of this, right? Because they they know that the hole was dug pretty deep down. So they're going to have to get him in. The back half of the schedule is set up for immense success, if you look at it. Uh, defensive strength is a nightmare matchup for Virginia's offensive scheme. You look at after that bye week, you know, you, you've got, before the bye week, you get West Virginia at North Carolina, at Pitt, and then Miami. 
And then you take a bye week. You've got at NC State. But then once you move on from there, Georgia Tech at Duke at Liberty and Virginia. You could reasonably win all of those. I've got them actually starting off two and six on the season and winning the last four games to get them to six and six. Now, obviously, that's not going to go over the win total, but I, th- I think if you get to a bowl game in year one with this roster and the way that you're wanting to play, I I mean, that's a commendable job. So I, I like the hire of Brett Pry. I like what they're doing here. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for them to fully build this thing up, but obviously... We'll get there when we get there. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.